In this video, we'll look at three different ways to apply a pattern to the stitching. We'll use the stamp, user defined split, and program split. Okay, and the little clownfish here, I'll, um, because with user defined split, you have to create the split as you're digitizing, I'll just isolate this part of the fish and duplicate it. Um, so I'll just change the color so I can identify it, and I'll digitize over the top of it. So selecting complex fill tool. and selecting the user defined split with the shortcut icon and turning it on I'll just digitize around the shape of the fish so it's a good thing to remember when using the complex fill tool to try and put in as few uh, node points as you can get away with to make the shape it's much easier to um, to add nodes than it is to delete them and you'll get a better shape with fewer nodes as well the other interesting thing is when you're using this tool when you get back to the first input point don't try and digitize the last point on top of it just get within a certain distance of it and hit enter and it will close the object for you here I'm just I hit enter once and then proceed to cut a hole out of the the shape it's not until I hit enter the second time that the shape will be created so in this case, because I've selected user defined fill, um, it's asked me now to put the points in on the on, on the on the fill split, so the split line. So it's an extra process in digitizing a shape with complex fill. Normally, it's digitize the shape, then enter the start and finish point, and enter the angle. But here it's. Um, enter the angle and then enter the split lines and they can be just a single split line or complex lines so you'll notice here I'm doing a, the, the red rings are for left clicks and the blue rings are for right clicks so I'm starting to work back up with a separate line object It doesn't matter if you go outside the stitched area with this, it'll only put the lines in the particular object that you're digitizing over. So I'll just change that to Tatami to Stitch. I know this, it should have done this first, but it doesn't really matter. I'll just go up and change it now and turn True View on, and you'll see the, um, the splits in. The object so I just drag that back to its correct position in the design and delete the purple one which I was using as a template and just unhide or show all of the objects in the design and you can see the pattern there so you could continue on and do the whole of the fish you can also uh, select to split just alternate lines so you get a lighter effect or you can turn the user defined split on and off in the properties box under decorative fill okay we'll now look at um, our program split So I'm just I just selected the the drawing tool, the curved drawing tool, and I've drawn one scale. Now with it selected, I go under the object menu and create program split. You give it a name. So in this case I've called it scale three because I think I've got a couple of other scales in my library. And it'll create it just for the normal template. So now I select Program Split and the one that I've just created will appear in the drop down but you can select any at this stage. Now if you hit the Layout button um, you'll see three blue images there and the bottom one or the left hand one you can resize, rotate, uh, change th those sorts of settings and the other two are positional 
uh, vectors. So you can see me rotating the bottom one. I can resize just like any other object uh, in your design. It's, it's just the reshaping toolbar that's allowing me to do this. Now a moment ago uh, the letter S came up on the screen that was to turn my stitches off so I can get a better view of the vector lines. And now you can see the program split which is a continual um, pattern throughout the object. There's a little bit of a curve on this because I had Florentine fill already set as one of the properties of the object. And you can display this as a, a tatami stitch, as a tatami satin combo or as a straight satin stitch. And you can come back at any time by clicking the layout button and changing the position, the rotation and the size of the scales. Okay, now we'll look at the third method and we'll use the Leaving Barramundi for this one. This is a great new addition to Embroidery Studio 3.0. It's a stamp tool. Um, we simply digitize the shape and then stamp onto the design. So to do that, we open our stamp tool and you've got a, a couple of options here. We'll look at, select the digitize option. And then anywhere on your work screen, just digitize the shape. There's no need to select any other tool. That will then appear in your um, stamp tool window. And then select the use stamp button and just click on your design. So it's a two-step process. You left click to, um, to anchor the shape down and then move your mouse to rotate it and click again to confirm. So it's a click, rotate and click. Now the obvious advantage of this over the program split is that you can define exactly where you want the splits to be and the advantage over the user defined split is that you can add this after the object has been digitized. It can be a complex shape or as I've done here just a simple, uh, the simple single scale. And the great thing about this too is that uh, by hitting the letter H or engaging your shortcut, um, your reshaping tool, you're able to view the vector file, the little, the little curve, and change its shape, its position, drag it, move it, delete it, whatever you wish. And you'll see that in just a moment. So here's my reshaping tool. I'll just just drag and then you can see the individual scars so I can pick them up and move them and edit them just as you can with any other object. Okay, so there's three methods, the program split, the stamp, and the user-defined split.